How many colors do you need to color a map? Often when you see some map of a, of a country or of a continent, you'll recognize that the different countries are colored different colors so you can distinguish them. But do we really need so many colors? Surely some countries that are not close to each other could be colored the same. We could phrase the problem like this. What is the minimal number of colors needed so that in your map, any two adjacent countries or countries that share a border are colored differently. A student of De Morgan recognized that four colors always seem to be enough. For instance, look at this region of the United States. We have the state of Nevada that is surrounded by California, Arizona, Utah, Iowa, and Oregon. We can color this region with just four colors. We might begin by coloring Nevada blue. Then we can use another color like green for California. Now, since Arizona borders both California and Nevada, it can't be blue or green. So let's introduce a new color. We'll use red or pink. Now we come to Utah. Since it borders Arizona, it can't be pink. Since it borders Nevada, it can't be blue. But look, Utah does not border California. So we're free to use green again. We're going to try and recycle colors as often as possible. Now we move up to Iowa. And again, since Iowa is not touching Arizona, we can use this pink color once more. But now we land at Oregon and notice something happens. Oregon borders Nevada, Iowa, and California. A blue state, a green state, and a pink state, requiring a fourth color. So here's a cluster of states in our map that will force us to have at least four colors. Will we ever need six colors or seven colors or more? That is the statement of the four color theorem that four colors are always enough. De Morgan originally posed this problem to his friend Hamilton, but neither one of them seemed to be able to come up with a solution. It remained an open question in mathematics. What we're going to do in this video is prove a slightly weaker result. Instead of showing that four colors are always enough, we're going to begin by showing that five colors are always enough. We'll call this the five color theorem. But rather than making it a theorem about maps, let's translate this into a statement about graphs. Recognize that we can reimagine this map as a graph, where each state will become a vertex. So one vertex in the middle for Nevada, and then one for California, Arizona, Utah, Iowa, and Oregon. Any map can be realized into a graph this way. What we'll then do is we'll draw an edge between two vertices if those two states or regions share a border. For instance, Nevada and Utah share a border. Nevada actually shares a border with each of these other states. So it'll branch out like so. But also Utah shares a border with Arizona, which borders California, which borders Oregon, which borders Iowa, which borders Utah. We give this web-like structure this graph. Now, coloring the map then becomes a problem of coloring the graph, where we want to color the vertices of the graph so that no two vertices that are connected by an edge are colored the same. We'll use the same coloring as we did on the map. Nevada, we color blue. And then California, we colored green. And then Arizona needs to be a different color from both of them, so we color it pink. And then Utah can be colored green again, because there is no edge connecting Utah to California. And then Iowa is free to be colored pink again. But when we get to the vertex representing Oregon, since it shares edges with a pink, blue, and green vertex, we have to color Oregon a fourth color. A statement now is not just a statement about coloring regions of a map, but it's about coloring vertices of a graph. That is, we can say that 
any simple planar graph these graphs after all will be simple there won't be any loops because you won't have a country or a region bordering itself and you won't have multiple edges there's no need to have multiple edges between two vertices because all you need to do is record the information once that they share a border so our graphs are simple and of course they're planar because you don't have borders crisscrossing on top of each other so in any simple planar graph the question is can we how many colors does it take to color it the five color theorem says that any simple planar graph can be colored with just five colors we we'll say that's it can be five colorable meaning at most five colors are needed how do we prove this theorem we're going to prove it using the technique of mathematical induction. We're going to begin by imagining the simplest graphs that have only one vertex. If our number of vertices equals one, well then of course you can color it with at most five colors. You only need one color to color that one vertex or that one region. So then what mathematical induction says is assume you can color graphs that have n vertices and then justify that if you can color a graph that has n vertices you can also color a graph that has n plus one vertices once you convince yourself of that then we know that since we can color a graph that has one vertex we can also color a graph that has one more so that we want a graph that has two vertices and since we can color a graph that has two vertices we can color a graph that has three vertices and then four vertices and five vertices and so forth so that we can color graphs with however many regions we like or maps with however many regions we like okay so how are we going to do this well we're going to use a prior result we saw previously that any simple connected graph has a vertex with degree at most five for instance in this graph right at the center you have a vertex that has degree exactly five in fact all of the vertices have degree that are less than or equal to five but even in the most complicated simple planar graph you can imagine you'll always be able to find some vertex of degree at most five this suggests a strategy what we're going to do is we're going to imagine our graph that has n plus one vertices and we're going to be able to single out some vertex some vertex that called v that has vertex has degree at most five what we're then going to do is we're going to remove that vertex giving us a graph that now only has n vertices and we assume we know how to color it because there are only n vertices then the question is when we put v back in will we still be able to color the whole thing well if degree of v is less than five and it's only equal to four it's only equal to four then that, that means your vertex is, co is connected to at most at most four other at most four other colors and if it's only connected to four other colors then you always have so let's do let's do the same color so this should be this should be let's make this pink so orange green pink and and let's call it yellow a, a new color we're allowing five colors which will always mean there will be a free color there will always be some free color a fifth color to color the center vertex we're allowing ourselves five colors okay but what in the case what about the case when the degree of v equals five what if your vertex is connected to five other vertices by edges well now we might get into some trouble you might imagine a case where all of those five vertices already use our five colors so let's leave v uncolored because we're going to have to come back and think about how to color v so we'll leave V uncolored for now. And we're going to think about how can we color V if all these other five vertices use the five colors already. Say they use your blue and your yellow and your orange and your pink. 
and you're green. How then should we color the center one? We've got into trouble. There's no color left to color V. What we're going to need to do is change some of these colors outside, freeing us to color V some other color. How might we do this? One strategy is we might think about, okay, how are these guys connected to other individuals? In particular, what, what is this blue vertex connected to? Is it connected to an orange vertex? Maybe it is. We don't know. And maybe that orange vertex goes on to be connected to some other blue vertex. And this could continue in some orange-blue chain. Now, one possibility is that this orange-blue chain will eventually come up and connect with the orange vertex here at the bottom so that you have a chain of blue, orange, blue, orange, blue, orange connecting with the vertex at the bottom. That's possible. Or the other possibility is that they are not connected by such a chain. That your blue vertex and your orange vertex, although he may be connected to some other blue vertex, and this blue vertex may be connected to some other orange vertex, there's no chain connecting the two. I'll finish up drawing. We had a, a yellow vertex and a green vertex and a pink vertex. Okay, so there may be no other chain that connects these two. There's, there's no chain that, that connects these two. There's no chain that connects the blue orange with this blue orange. In this second case, that there is no chain connecting this blue orange to this blue orange, what we will do is we'll simply switch all the blue orange in this chain. So maybe this chain comes up like this, and he may go over and look something like this. In this chain, we'll switch all the blues with all the oranges. So this blue will now be an orange. That orange will now be a blue. That blue will now be an orange, and that orange will now be a blue. We've eliminated the prior colors by switching the blue and the orange. Notice what we've done. We no longer have the center vertex V bordering a blue. It only borders an orange and orange, a green and a yellow and a pink. Since the center vertex no longer borders a blue, we can color blue the center. We freed blue, so now we can make the center blue. But this argument won't work in this other setting. Because if we start switching the blues and the orange in this chain, look what happens. This blue becomes orange, that's great. He becomes blue, he'll become blue. Ah, but this orange also becomes blue. So all that happened is that you switch from having blue up here and orange down here to having the opposite. So our center vertex still borders a blue and an orange. We didn't free anything. But by having a blue-orange chain connect this top vertex to this bottom vertex, we created a wall of separation between this yellow vertex and this pink vertex. Now there's no way to have a pink-yellow chain. This pink could connect with some yellow, and that pink should, could connect, that yellow could then connect with a pink, and so forth. But that chain will never be able to connect with a pink yellow chain originating from this yellow. So although this yellow can connect with a pink, that can then come and connect with some yellow, and so forth, there's no way possible to connect this pink yellow chain with this pink yellow chain, because there's a barrier between them of blues and oranges. What does that mean? That means that we can now freely switch the pinks and yellows in one of these chains. For instance, in this inside chain, I'll switch the pink with the yellows. So I'll get rid of all these colors, swapping out wherever I see yellow for pink. As a result, we've now freed yellow from being used which allows us to color the center yellow. We have freed the color yellow for the center vertex. What the five color theorem has shown us is it shows us there's always some way to color the map so that a most 
five colors are used. Can we do better? Can we do this with four colors? We'll address that topic in the next video.